There is nothing worse than untapped potential. If you know that you're made for more, this is the place. I know that every successful person I've ever met has one thing in common. They do not let themselves fall victim to their circumstances. They figure out a way to rise above it. So join me on this journey where I help you to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. If you're feeling stuck and you're needing some practical tools, some hope to get you to that better life, this is definitely the place for you. Oh my goodness, Crystal, I have been waiting patiently for the chance to be able to introduce you to my friends, to my listeners. You are an amazing inspiration to me. I cannot wait to have a chat to talk to you on the on this call today and to get everybody else to fall in love with you. So I'm going to start out with the officialness of it all. So I'm going to say that Crystal here is a feng shui designer and clutter expert. Super fancy. She's done like all kinds of cool stuff um, in that space. But one of the things that Crystal and I really connected with was just her amazing ability to have persistence, grit, um, an overcoming attitude. She's just really, really inspiring. And we, as we were chatting just now, I just realized that we grew up like minutes from each other without ever even knowing it, which is really cool because now she lives across the country. So we both can relate to that small town, Minnesota <laughs> grow, growth, you know, journey right there. Right. But Crystal, oh my goodness. Welcome to the Unstuck Podcast. Thank you. I am so excited to be here today. <laughs> All right. So I want you, Crystal, to give us an idea of who you are today. What are you up to? How are you serving people? What are you most proud of today? Um, well, you know, these days I am all about empowering women. <laughs> I am, I'm still working in the same space, um, feng shui design, clutter expert. Um, and I really help people design a space and a life that they love. Mm -hmm. I love that. And you, you do it how, like, tell us a little bit about the, the women that you serve or the people that you serve. Like, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I have, a, I actually have a very, a proprietary framework that I developed over the course of my own journey okay. um, into, into the work that I do. Yeah. And um, I developed my own framework. It's called the design life method, mind, body, soul, and home. And so I take my, my clients through these four pillars yeah. of decluttering their mindset. Um, what I call designing their evolution and then planning, yeah. you know, their life and, and getting into alignment with their, their space. And so that they can really manifest the life that they want into existence um, by using their space as a 3d vision board to make that happen. Oh my gosh. I love that. That is so brilliant. There's no way I could have ever done that the way that you just did. Okay. My friend. <laughs> so I know that you have been on quite a journey to get to this framework, right? And so I want you to take us down that journey. Um, let us kind of walk alongside of you and kind of share your experiences, your insight, <clears throat> anything that you felt like could, could really just benefit or bless the people who are listening? Um, well, you know, developing my framework was all about my own, like my own entrepreneurial slash healing journey. I'm mm -hmm. a big believer that entrepreneurship is kind of the biggest personal development <laughs> program that there yes. is, yes, to be is. quite honest. You, you grow know? or you die. That's and, it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And I've wanted to be an entrepreneur ever since I was a little girl. But, you know, I grew up, I grew up in a very abusive household and, mm -hmm. um, I was always really told I would never amount to anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't until I was way later in life, you know, that I sort of was coming into my own, shall mm -hmm. we call it, yeah, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I went to, I, I decided to go to school, um, mm -hmm. 
I, I sat for a few months actually trying to decide between being an interior designer and being a um, forensic psychologist, <laughs> of all things, <laughs> um, studying that sort of connection of, mm -hmm. of like how the brain works, how we become who we are. Yeah. Um, and I, I went to school to become an interior designer mm -hmm. and in my psychology class, actually, we had to write a paper on something related to psychology and something related to our field of study. Mm -hmm. And I picked feng shui as my topic. Mm -hmm. It was something I'd heard about at the time, yep. right? But I didn't know a lot about it. It had really kind of only been popular in the Western culture for yeah. about five, five years at mm -hmm. that time. Yep. And so I, I didn't know a whole lot about it. And I dove into this homework assignment yeah. and it really became a kind of a fascination for me mm -hmm. when I was young and my parents had divorced and remarried. I was kind of introduced to magic and energy work Mm -hmm. way back when I was like nine years old. Yeah. And so that had always been something I had studied um, in my life just out of personal Yeah, interest. curiosity. And so when yeah. I, yeah. And so when I really started diving into feng shui and understanding mm -hmm. this idea of our space is a reflection of um, kind of what's going on with us, but it's right. all about the flow of energy in our space. Mm -hmm. And we're either in alignment with it. And then when we're in alignment with that flow of energy, that's when manifestation happens. That's when yep. life flows and everything is easy. Yes. Right. And when we're out. And so I was really fascinated with this idea yes. But I was, you know, still in school and really didn't have time to focus on it. Right. So, you know, I, I, I put it on the back burner as a thing we'll learn later and right. finished out school, started into my career and it was a couple years into my career as an interior designer. And I was, I was living in Hawaii at the time. Yeah. And I was working in very high end residential with a lot of entrepreneurs that are, their companies are uh, just n names. I can't think of the word I wanted yes. to say. Like they're, you know, like household names. That's household the word I wanted. Yeah. Household <laughs> names. There you go. Like their companies are household names for us, you know? And so I was really working with, um, very successful people mm -hmm. and getting to see sort of, you know, what they did behind the scenes. And we had submitted a design to a client in China. Okay. And they sent it back saying, yeah, the feng shui is all wrong in this. We can't accept this design. <laughs> and my boss was in like a panic of what do I do now? Yeah. Can anybody help? Does anybody know anything about feng shui? And, you know, I was the only one that knew anything. I was the only one that put myself forward to because say, of that paper yeah, that I can help. Written. Yeah. <laughs> because of that paper that I had written. And I mean, I had tried, I, I, had, yeah. I had, you know, I had implied it in my life a little bit, but it was, you know, like at that time I was still, learning from this book or that book. And I still right. was not really understanding it. It was, I was still in that self-taught phase of, I yep. think I'm trying to figure it out. Um, but I was, I was trying to make a name for myself in my career. I was yeah. trying to stand out. I was trying to, I was trying to matter. Like I was trying to, yeah. to, to show up and, right. and be seen. And so, <laughs> and so then I, I, and then she was like, okay, here you go. Fix it. And then the imposter syndrome really set in. <laughs> I was right? just going to say, like, did now you I'm like, that? <laughs> now I'm, no, full on, I did. I totally did. Because it was like, because then I was like, what if the client knows more about this than I do? Like, what if I give it right. back to them? And they're like, this is all wrong. Right, you know, right. I had a lot, I had a lot of, I had a lot of stuff around having to prove myself. Right. From, you know, from what happened in my childhood right. and, um, and, and having to overcome a lot of those things, I had a lot of um, this need to prove myself all my life. And yeah. this was one of those moments of yeah. that. And so um, luckily it worked out. <laughs> and, um, but I also realized how much I really loved that part of it. Yeah. It, it, it made it, it, it brought a wholeness right. to 
designing space for me. Like it, mm-hmm. it, it brought up a, a piece that was very much missing out of it. Right. And right. so I, um, I, I actually found another college and I went back to school to yeah. study feng shui professionally mm-hmm. and not just what I learned out of books, but to actually yeah. go to school to learn how to do yeah. it. And, um, I was still working in my job and I started, you know, like taking clients on the side mm-hmm. and, uh, over time developing my framework, like learning, listening to them and working with them as Mm -hmm. especially the first initial ones that were really the guinea pigs of, am I doing this right? Am I figuring like just in that part, (laughs) but that was part of the developing my own framework too, um, around how I like to work with clients because there was so much more to learning just the feng shui piece, there were so many pieces that I noticed were missing when I went to actually work with clients. Okay. You know, there was, um, there was the feng shui part, but everybody got stuck at, I can't declutter, right? I I'm, Mm. I've got this clutter and we would talk about the clutter and, and they just wouldn't be able to move forward and everybody would get stuck there. Right. And so, but it, feng shui only just talked about clutter as a, as a, um, like part of the problem. Like it's what yeah. stagnates the energy, but it never really dove into the why and the what. Yeah. And I got fascinated with that part because that was where all my clients were getting stuck. Mm-hmm. And so I started trying to research what I could about clutter. Um, and it led me back into that psychology journey right. of understanding the relationship between clutter and psychology and what is it really right. a reflection of as right. far as like internally. Um, and then I got hurt. Um, I got hurt at my job and I, I couldn't walk anymore. Um, I was in, I was stuck on bed rest mm-hmm. and I, I was, facing a, a huge battle with the insurance company right. who really didn't want to pay for me to get any sort of treatment. They were yeah. really more wanted to just prove I was a liar <laughs> yeah. and, and cut me loose. And so I, um, I really was in this situation of almost helplessness, right? Yeah. I couldn't right. get medical treatment, but I couldn't get help and I couldn't get support. And so I was in that, um, and I reached this place of sort of rock bottom yeah, um, where I was stuck at home with, I couldn't work. I couldn't do anything to help mm-hmm. myself. And, and so I was, I started really applying feng shui in a different kind of way. Like I started pr- applying it for not just an overall, like, let's make sure that the energy is right in here, right. but more like with a purpose. I have a goal of, I want to walk. <laughs> like I want to be able to walk again. Yeah. I want to be able to have this, um, have sort of my body back. I want to have control of things. I want to, you know, I had these visions right. of, yeah. okay, this is what I want the feng shui to solve. Not just, oh, I want this magic life, but I had a very intentional purpose. Right. And so right. I started creating this space for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, And then I started really applying everything that I knew, everything that I had, you know, tried to walk clients through and stuff. And, um, and over that course of time was how my framework really developed. I developed, I created this space for me to start doing self-care, like start doing yoga as a way to heal my body because I couldn't get the medical treatment that I needed. I couldn't get the surgery, um, um, that I needed. Um, and then I was just applying feng shui to it. I started decluttering my space and then really diving into the, you know, that connection, the, the reflection of, of, of how it really affects us in our space right? Um, and developing. And that was what led to developing how I work with clients after yeah. I had really applied it to myself. And I was starting to see all these Mm-hmm. wins in my life. Like I was right. starting to actually, I was getting back out of the wheelchair and stuff. Um, a friend of mine actually was like, Hey, can you help me with my space? And I started yeah. doing it differently than I had done it previously with clients. Right. Right. Um, I started applying this new framework that I had developed in my own, yeah. just applying it to me. And all of a sudden she had all these crazy results too. And then it was just sort of one after another, um, that they all just 
I, and I want to get into, you know, I'm really fascinated by your framework and I'm really fascinated by the association between our environment, right? And what goes on inside of our minds, right? Because if our mind is cluttered, likely our environment is cluttered. If our environment is cluttered, our mind is cluttered. And there might be things that are going on that we have to work through as far as clutter inside of our mind in sync with getting our environment in place. So tell me a little bit about the work that you had to do inside of your mind to help you get there as well. Um, well, that's just it. I had to connect those dots. That's, yeah. That was sort of what that work looked like. I started diving into looking at what is the, what is my clutter really a reflection of? Right. Um, when I started diving into my space and what I started finding was it's more like, um, it was all of this scarcity mindset, mm -hmm. worthiness mindset, obligation yes. mindset, yes. and all of that was really stuck in there, yeah. but it's reflected in the clutter. Yes. And so I was able to really start connecting those dots and yeah. declutter those things yeah. so that I could really release them, you know, and, yeah. and not have them continue to come back. Right. That's, that's what I had always found before that I was always a, a big declutterer, but yeah, I always seemed like it was a never ending. Didn't matter how much I decluttered. I always wound <laughs> up with new clutter yes. right? because it was just the sort of never ending job. But I figured out this, that there was a whole process to going through it. There's a whole system. There's a five yeah. step process that you have to go through to actually, um, disconnect that disconnect um, from that that relationship that you know, relationship so that I, you can um really release it that's amazing okay so i have to tell you this because i think it's fun so i also love design and i was in school first pre med but i also thought maybe interior design like you know just like you like forensic psychology interior design so i always love design and what's really interesting about what you just said is that as we sit here today, literally yesterday, Crystal, I had this gigantic breakthrough in my own life that I literally feel like chains had fallen off of unworthiness, of um, obligation, of people pleasing, of just not being worthy enough to have relationships that aren't okay. And without even like realizing that we were going to talk later today until I looked at my calendar, I had asked my husband if he would go to the store and pick up the bookshelves that I've been looking at for six months because I'm sick of my office being like this. <laughs> it's like once that happened, it's like I want everything else to be in alignment. And I, and I cannot tell you mm -hmm. that what an amazing feeling that is. It's, it's linking up. And I know that it's not coincidental. And so I cannot wait to hear about your framework and how you can teach people in the, in the few minutes that we have together, how to at least get started on moving themselves from where they are now, if you're feeling stuck to using some of the energy, the flow inside of your brain, inside of your environment in order to get yourself from where you want to go. So you guys, I'm still girlfriend. I want you then mm. to bless us with some of your insights, some of your wisdom in the next couple of minutes so that we can start to understand your framework and start applying some of the principles literally today. So why don't you get started and kind of tell us all about it? <laughs> um, so the design life method, mind, body, soul, home is kind of very much like doing what you just said. Yeah. Breaking those bonds and then designing your space but we're just doing it in reverse order. Really, yes. we're designing your space to help you break those bonds yes. so that you move into that yeah. woman who who owns that space. Yeah. That's, you know, it's it's what I call design for who you are becoming. Oh, I love it. Um because we're actually we're actually looking at um most designers want to design for who you are today, like as an right. end result sort of yes. thing, like a reflection is, of and, who you are now. Yeah a reflection of who you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. And the truth is, um, the truth is your space is, is a reflection of who you are right now. That's what it is already. Yeah. If we're, if we're going to design it, yeah. the whole point of designing it is, is to design it for, to reflect who you want to become. Yeah. Because 
then it starts to actually act like a 3D vision board to to help you to become her. Yeah. Right. Because it's your your space is already reflecting everything that's going on inside. Right. Right. When you start to to design it on purpose, intentionally, and using feng shui to really get you into alignment energetically with the flow, now it acts like a full, the whole space acts like a big vision board to reflect who you want to be, yeah. to kind of force that into existence yeah. um, in, in a way that's, that actually works. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And so tell me a little bit more about, you know, the mind, body, and soul components. What it, you said there's five like what is it four 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 parts so so just give me the, an idea of, of come some of the work that you do with with your clients certainly mm -hmm. so we go through the design life method the okay. um in order to design your space yeah so that it's a space that you love and it's a space that's empowering you so we always start with sort of the basics right yeah we want to start with a clean slate we start with decluttering. And mm -hmm. since clutter is always directly related to your mindset, we mm -hmm. start with that first pillar, which is the mind yep. decluttering your mindset piece. And so we start doing at that process so that we are creating, getting the energy flowing in your space, mm -hmm. um, without the clutter of limiting beliefs, stagnating it all up. Yes. Um, then we actually look at the evolution of who are you becoming mm -hmm. so that we're designing the space for her and with her in mind. Yeah. Um, and then getting her into alignment with, by using the feng shui of the space. Um, because you have an energetic frequency. Yeah. And your home also has an energetic mm -hmm. frequency. And sometimes those two frequencies are out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And so we want to actually correct that so that they are in alignment mm -hmm. so that the energy is flowing in your space and in your life, because that's what is, it's a reflection of in your life as well. Yeah. Right. As far as like how things show up in the world. Yeah. Um, and then that last piece is the, the fourth pillar is the home pillar, yeah. which is where the design part really comes in. The feng shui alignment is just, you know, where we're placing it and right. how, um, and how we're positioning everything in there. Yeah. But some people want to, you know, will think that feng shui remedies are just these ugly things that we put up and they're obvious and they're so visible. Yeah. And that's really not true. Feng Shui is not meant to be visible at all. Yeah. Um, in fact, if you see or hear those remedies, you should know that those are huge red flags, that those are not real Feng Shui. Um, but so that home pillar, the final pillar is really putting it all together in one package mm -hmm. so that you're getting not only a space that's energetically in alignment, that you are yeah. in alignment with, but one yeah. that is truly reflecting who you are becoming so that you have room to become her. Yeah. Um, and that are sort of the four pillars that we walk through together to yeah. create a space that you truly love and that really reflects who you are. I love that. So I would love to just really focus on the decluttering part right now, because you had said, and I love that you have your mm -hmm. forensic psychology, like interest minds, you love the mind <laughs> as well. So tell me a little bit about mm -hmm. what you've experienced with other people that you've worked with as far as their struggles with decluttering. That's the first thing that you ask them to do, but people struggle with that. So what are some of the things that mm -hmm. you could give our audience if that's where they are right now? They're like, Lachelle, I would love, I would love to have a space that's reflective of who I want to become, but I have too much going on here mm -hmm. and I have too much going on here and I'm overwhelmed and I don't even know where to start. So what are some of the things that you've helped your clients do who are struggling with the declutter part? Um, well, that's really always where we start. Um, yeah. because that is where the struggle yes. happens. Yeah. And so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's always about, a, it's looking at it from a different perspective. Okay. It's being able to see something from, from a new position okay. um, that changes your relationships with things, right? Okay. And just like most people just sort of think of their home as, well, this is just where I live. Mm -hmm. But it's the container that houses all of your things. Right. It's, the, it's your sanctuary from the world. Mm -hmm. it's, right. It's, 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 you have a relationship with it, but we let it get 
filthy and cluttered and messy and dirty right. and we don't treat it with love. Right. Okay. And that's sort of a reflection of the same way we don't treat ourselves with mm-hmm. love. Yeah. Right. Um, it's when we sit here and we say, I don't have time to deal with this. Right. Um, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do this. Yeah. Um, because I have so many other more important things to do. Right. It's the same thing we tell ourselves about why we can't do self-care. Right. 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 Why we don't have time for all of the things because right. we are coming at it from a, we're coming at it from a position of scarcity, but we're also looking mm-hmm. at it like it's because we, we don't understand this relationship um, with our space. And so we keep, we stay in the struggle and we sabotage ourselves mm-hmm. by saying, I don't have time to do this now. I'll do it later. After right. I've arrived, which is why I say interior design is not a luxury for after you've arrived. Right. Because if you want to keep waiting until you get there, yeah. you're just going to be in the struggle the whole time right. while you're, while all of the energy is all stagnant and, right. and not moving. So the best thing you can do is, is, is start doing it from the beginning. Start decluttering up front. Mm-hmm. Sh- start showing your house love right? Because you have a relationship. It protects you from the outside world. Right. Right. But we don't really show it that we love it. Right. Right. And it is a, it, it's a reflection of us. So when we show our house, how much we love it, we yeah. show ourselves how much we love ourselves. I just read a book literally last week and she talked about that. She's, it's actually a book by Kimberly mm-hmm. Olson. I think it was called while why balance is BS, which I thought was kind of an interesting title, but she talks about that Mm -hmm. in order to have peak productivity, you have to get yourself decluttered, right? Your, is your space, Mm -hmm. is your house, is your email inbox driving you crazy? Is your Facebook messenger inbox driving you crazy? Is I spent some time yesterday just organizing the apps on my phone because they were driving me crazy. And so she's like, if you Mm -hmm. can take just a few minutes and just try to declutter some of these things, you're going to free up emotional energy that you don't even realize that you're wasting because your environment is not at a place where you want it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love that that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit too, about how you help your clients get over the limiting beliefs that are keeping them from becoming who they want to be. Um, well, because they're reflected in their clutter those limiting beliefs. So when we start connecting the dots and we start really looking at those relationships and start, um, decluttering those things, we're able to really do that disconnection process. Um, so give me an example of a limiting belief that you see common with the people that you work with or something that you've gone through yourself. Um, that I don't have enough time. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I don't have enough time. Um, that's always a really good one, right? That's a, that's a sort of scarcity thing. I don't have enough time or I don't have enough money. Those are, you know, going to mm-hmm. be scarcity limiting beliefs that I see a lot. Um, okay. I'm not ready. That one is a really big one yeah. that, that I hear from people. And it's funny how often they say I'm not ready, but because they're not ready for their own successes. Mm-hmm. They're not, they're still blocking themselves. Right. So they're oh. not, I'm not ready to receive what I'm asking for. Yeah. And, and people so that it's a limiting belief that they keep telling yeah. themselves and yeah. that's why they never receive it. That's really interesting. And I'm just curious, if, have you found that people, when you talk about, I'm not ready, I'm picturing, I'm picturing items like tangible items in my home that I can't quite get rid of, that I have an emotional attachment (laughs) that I can't quite let go of. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit, I'm just, I'm really fascinated by this actually. Um, I have a family um, of people who have a very big attachment to material things very motion, very tied mm-hmm. emotionally to things. My husband is like the opposite. He's like, get it out of my house. Like, I don't want it here. <laughs> and and the joke around our house is that I'm not allowed, allowed to bring in any large volume items. <laughs> he just doesn't want it. Right? <laughs> um, and so, you know, I'm just, I'm really fascinated by, by this. And, and why is it that we have such a hard time letting go of things 
and that emotional attachment that we have to that. I, I just, I would love to hear your, your perspective on that. Um, they, because they're connected. It, it's because they're, they're connected because, um, because like I said, your home is an extension of your energetic field. Mm -hmm. So all of the beliefs that are going on internally are, are reflected in the clutter, but it's, it's, have, have you ever tried to let go of a belief? Like it's really hard. Oh my to gosh. Go yeah. Of a belief. Yeah. Especially when it's, yeah. Especially when it's so deeply buried, you don't even know that it's there. You don't even know what it is. Right. Right. So we have all of these beliefs that were taught from a very, very young age. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of them are usually around scarcity, worthiness, and obligation. Okay. And, um, and most of the time we don't really even know what those beliefs are. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're reflected in the clutter that we have. And so a lot of us are, have also been raised in this whole, like, you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Yeah. We're oh, not really sure. ever taught how to, how to face these things or that we need to. And, you yeah. know, we're taught this whole fake it and pretend like everything is all perfect, yeah. but it, that's just not the way it, it works yeah like it's so people get so stuck in the clutter because partly it's a two-part thing the clutter stagnates the flow of energy in the space which right. stagnates then the flow of energy in your in your body and right. in your life mm -hmm. but when you're feeling that stagnant then everything feels so heavy and it's hard to get motivated to get up and do the thing yeah so you're fighting swimming upstream first right. of all right and you're swimming upstream to where like the bears are going to eat you. Like, you know, you're swimming upstream to something yeah. bad. Yeah. Like it's not, you know what I mean? So it's not right. like you want to go. It's a have to. Like, right. Right. It's, most people that sort of go on this healing journey of facing yeah. their limiting beliefs and really decluttering what's going on. Right. It's, it's a, it's not a, you know what I mean? Like that's a, a lot of it is unpleasant. There's like trauma stuff in there that, you know, so now we're, we're demotivated because the energy is all stagnant and we're right. looking at, I don't want to do this thing anyway. Right. I don't want to do this thing. And because that's how it got there in the first place. And so they just get stuck. Yeah. And they just, it's hard to get unstuck because you're, like I said, it's kind of fighting a losing battle. Yeah. Um, and, a, and that's mostly where, where I find there's a, it's almost like a, like a tipping point. Like there's just some people yeah. are go one direction and some go the other. It's funny because like you're, I've had clients that sound very much like your husband yeah. too. Yeah. That they will come in and be, and I'm, I'm sort of that way too. Like a more of a self-proclaimed minimalist. Yeah. yeah. I don't like a whole lot of stuff. Right. Um, I've had clients that come in and they're like, I'm a minimalist. I don't have any clutter. And I'm like, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because if you didn't have clutter, you wouldn't be here. Right. You wouldn't be stuck. You wouldn't feel yeah. the energy off in your space. And always we get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's just, it can even be one thing, one thing of clutter, one mm -hmm. teeny tiny little thing. And, mm -hmm. but it can be huge. I, I really think this is fascinating and I can see my own self having a scarcity mindset around self-care and not taking the time to clean up my email inbox or, I mean, I could tell you right now I have like probably 28 unread text messages and that's driving me nuts, but I don't do anything about it because I don't have the time, right? That's scarcity. And so I, I, I that's really makes, makes a lot of sense. How does trauma or unworthiness show up in clutter? Um, clarify what you mean by that question. Exactly. So, um, okay. Let me ask you this. If, if you notice that you help somebody through whatever it is, and mm -hmm. you've discovered that they had a lot of trauma that they had to work through and you were able to go backwards and say like, okay, like I've seen that people that have a lot of trauma typically have this in their life. Do you, do you, have you noticed anything like that? It's. No, the clutter is all different. Okay. That's yeah. what makes it so interesting. Too. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like there's this one consistent thing, right? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. There's never going to be a, oh my goodness, if you have a, this, that's your thing. Yeah. It never looks like that. Yeah. It looks like, 
For some people, it looks like a tea set. For other people, it might look like sheets. For some yeah. people, it's photos or e and emails. It yeah. might be um, clothes. It it, yeah. it might be um, unopened mail yeah. or um, uh, a broken mm. chair or a, an unfinished knitting project. Yeah. It can be so many things. That's so interesting. It, there is no real consistent... There's not a consistent through line with the op, like from object to direct yeah. correlation yeah. like that. But there is always a correlation from the story to the clutter. That is so interesting. And I think that what I want you guys to hear when you're, when you're listening to Crystal and her expertise is that what you just said really stuck out to me that if you have something chronically, like for me, it is, is my email inbox. It overwhelms me. It's hard for me to keep up. And so I just kind of whatever, avoid it. If you find that you're the person who always can't open your mail, you always start a project and then it sits there and you, whatever, you are somebody who hoards shoes like I do. <laughs> Apparently I just think that they're always going to be in style. Um, but what I think that is interesting is that identifying in yourself, like what is it that thing that continues to follow you when you get all the other things kind of in play, but there's always those things that are always there. It sounds like you can kind of come back and re-examine and ask yourself, why is that an issue for me? Why do I keep kind of getting hung up on that? And what can I do to help me get unstuck from that? Because that little bit, like you said, can throw you off energetically and, and help to sabotage the future version of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I don't think you can hoard shoes though. I think shoes are the exception <laughs> to the hoarding rule. All right. Thank rule. you. I think that's, I think, I think shoes are the one exception to the All hoarding right, rule. Make sure that's just to my that personal episode. belief. <laughs> it's just my personal belief, but you know, um, yes, everything else. <laughs> and so if you, mm. you know, as we part here, I'm just curious if you have somebody that's listening and they're like, okay, Lachelle, like, you've just helped me. There's, there's this thing, there's this thing that I continually do. What would you tell somebody that where they could start to examine themselves to figure out like, what is that about? So that they don't continue with to the, self with, Sure. With decluttering, start with it. You know, I, I've created a framework around decluttering your mindset and I do have a whole five-step method for that, okay. that you can actually download for free. Awesome. Um, at, at declutteryourmindset.com. I tried to keep it very simple. Awesome. Um, and you can go there and get that. And it, it'll, it'll walk you through that five-step method mm -hmm. to, to declutter. Um, and so that you are, are really truly able to, to release the clutter yes. and, and not keep carrying that baggage forward. Oh, I love that. And I will make sure you guys that you have access to that um, in the show notes so that it's easy to grab and Crystal, I'll make sure that everybody has all of the ways they can follow you, ways that they can contact you if they want to work with you, all the things, because I just adore you. I think that your story is very inspirational and, you know, you don't think about your home as being something that could be sabotaging who you are becoming. And I just love that we can find all these little ways to, to really show up as our best self. And as you know, like I'm all about better, right? How can I be better? How can I do better? How can I have better in life? And, and even mm -hmm. in my business, right? So, um, you guys we will make sure that you have that option to connect with Crystal and Crystal. I always ask every single guest to give me, um, or our audience, I guess, and a question that they can think about that will help them move from where they are now to where they want to be. Give them one question to ask themselves. Yes. I don't know why, but the question that is coming up for me is yeah. how true is that really? Mm, I love how that. How true is it really? I love asking that question without you knowing that I'm going to ask that question because I find that whatever comes to people is exactly what's supposed to come to people. So thank you for that, you guys. Um, let's get decluttered hearts, minds, souls, bodies, homes, and really start just kind of showing up the way we want to. So thanks so much, Crystal. You guys all have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to the Untuck Podcast. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. And don't forget to check out the show notes if you want to get into my 
private club, The Better Club, to be able to learn better ways to be better, do better, and have better. So until next time, keep showing up. Let's get unstuck together. Have a great day.